In a previous lecture, I have derived the Riemann functional equation written in the following form. Let me write it down. Pi raised to the power minus s over 2. Then we have the gamma function evaluated at s over 2. The zero function evaluated at s. And this is equal to pi to the power minus 1 over 2 plus s over 2. And then we have gamma evaluated at 1 half minus s over 2, zeta evaluated at 1 minus s. This is the Riemann functional equation written in one particular form that I derived in the past few lectures. And I will not derive it here, but I will work, I will start working from this equation and will uh, show you that it is also possible to recast this expression in, in another form. In particular, let's use the Lagrange duplication formula that I derived in uh, the past few lectures. So let me write it down to remind ourselves of the formula. We have gamma of z, gamma of z plus one half, equal to two to the power one minus two z, square root of pi, and then we have gamma of two z. Now, we can also set z equal to minus s over 2 in this formula. So we can rewrite the, the Lagrange duplication formula in the following form, gamma of minus s over 2. And then we have gamma of 1 half minus s over 2 equal to 2 to, two, two to the power 1 plus s square root of pi and we have gamma of minus s. Now I want to use this formula together with uh, this one in order to rewrite this one. So in particular, we can multiply both sides of that equation by gamma of minus s over two. So you can see that on the right here, we will have this which also appears uh, here, multiplied by, by this, gamma of minus s over 2. So we can use this duplication formula here, Lagrange duplication formula. And we can rewrite the functional equation in the following form, pi to the power minus s over 2, gamma of s over 2, gamma of minus s over 2, zero of s equal to then we have pi to the power minus one half plus s over two. And then here I can use the duplication formula. So I will have two to the power one plus s square root of pi. And then I have gamma of minus s. And then of course, I also have zero of one minus s like this. So I can simplify, if you check, I, I can simplify this uh, pi to the minus one half because that's square root of, uh, it, it is one over square root of pi. So this will simplify the square root of pi here. And uh, then I want to use also the Euler's reflection formula that I derived in the past few lectures. In particular, let me remind ourselves the formula. So we have gamma of 1 minus z, gamma of z equal to pi divided by sine of pi z. Now, let me rewrite this gamma of 1 minus z by using one of the properties of the gamma function. This is equal to this argument here, minus z times gamma of this argument minus 1. So here we will, we will be left with minus z. So it's minus z times gamma of minus z. And now I can set z equal to s over 2. So I can rewrite the formula by dividing also by minus z. I can, I can rewrite it as gamma of s over 2, gamma of minus s over 2, equal to pi divided by minus s over 2, sine of pi s over 2, like this. 
And now you can you can see that we can use this formula here in the functional equation. Why? Well, because you can see that here we have gamma of s over 2 times gamma of minus s over 2, which is exactly this, so we can replace this expression here, right? If we do that, we have minus pi over s over 2 sine of pi s over 2, then we have zero of s, and on the right, so I will put this uh, pi to the power minus s over 2 on the right, so we have pi to the power s, 2 to the power 1 plus s, gamma of minus s, zero of 1 minus s. And from here, we finally derive the, the functional equation. So let's rewrite it as z of s equal to pi to the power s minus 1, 2 to the power s minus s times gamma of minus s. And by the way, this is simply gamma of 1 minus s sine of pi s over 2 zero of 1 minus s, like this. So I have simply rearranged the, these terms in order to recast the functional equation in this form. And we will use this functional equation in the next uh, lecture to derive some more properties of the Riemann zero function, some important properties of the Riemann zero function. Here you can see that uh, after some algebra we, we rewrote uh, pi raised to the power s minus 1, because you have pi here, so you can divide by pi, and, and therefore you will simplify this pi, and there you will have pi to the s minus 1. Then we also simplified this uh, exponent here, this um, exponent equal to 1 for 2 to the 1 plus s, because we have 2 here in the denominator, of the denominator here, and therefore these 2 can be written also here. Let me do it. So you will have it here. And therefore, you can divide by 2, both sides, and you will uh, get rid of this. Right? So I simply rearrange the, the terms in this form. Very simple. And finally, you can see that uh, we can rewrite this uh, product as gamma of 1 minus s like this, so you can uh, cancel this. And this will be the starting point for uh, the next video. This is exactly the Riemann functional equation written in another form. And usually, this is the one that appears in uh, textbooks and uh, also on uh, the Wikipedia page, if you check it out. But let me tell you that uh, this is exactly coincident with uh, the formula that we wrote here and a couple of lectures ago, which is uh, this one. In the next video, as I said, we will uh, use this formula.